If you're a fan of Kling, Halo, or any other of the popular AI video models, you can use many of them on OpenArt AI as they've completely revamped their AI video tools, including a whole bunch more options and tools you can use to take more control of your videos. So today I'm gonna to dive in and show you these tools, exactly what's possible, and do a bit of a comparison so you can get a better idea of what's possible with this powerful platform. I'd also like to add that OpenArt are sponsoring this video, and there's a link in the description. I'm gonna start off with image to video. So I have this image here, which I generated using the Flux model model and I'm going to head up the top here to image to video you'll also notice it's on the menu over here but since I've already got my image I'm going to go up top here and if you've ever used open art before you'll notice there is a massive difference in the layout things are a lot more visual and we have a more diverse range of models to work with including Kling 2.0 which I'm pretty excited about we have text to video image to video also elements and audio now I have my image here and I have a start frame I can also add an end frame we're going to look at that a little bit later First of all, I just want to create a video and then we're gonna compare some of these different models. Starting off with Kling 1.6 and I add a prompt to describe the video. I have a Kung Fu man who looks around at the burning temple surrounding him. Camera circles him as he looks on in anger and despair. Now we have auto sound, auto speech. Once again, we can look at that later. Creativity level is about medium. I'm gonna try medium, low and high and we're gonna check out the results. Going for five seconds using Pro quality mode. I'm going to create all three and compare from there. We have Kling with low creativity, which has a little bit of camera movement and a little bit of subject movement. And medium creativity, a little bit more of a facial expression change, a little bit more character movement, but the high creativity, a lot more camera movement and a lot more from our subject. But how does it compare to some of these other models? Vidu offers a nice little four second clip with some subtle movement. But when we move on to Halo, the movement really picks up. Even though this one's for 2D art, it worked pretty well. The Halo standard, again, we get a lot of movement, very jerky and very unexpected. Like he's really kind of in despair there. And Wan, he spins around and he moves even more, even gets a little bit aggressive. VO2 offers very still limited movement, but still high quality imagery. And the one that most of us are excited about, which is Kling 2.0 doesn't have a pro mode, has very much the same settings. I'm gonna try medium, full, and lowest creativity. As we go from lowest to highest creativity, you can see the amount of the background detail and movement added to this is really impressive. This is probably the highest movement model you can get, and even with high creativity, it actually slowed the movement down a little bit, but a little bit more organic, I feel. But there's a few more factors to consider with these models. As you can see here, we've got Kling is actually marked as high quality, whereas v is marked as a fast video model it produces videos quicker and halo and one they're sort of there as options as well and you can see in the descriptions that they have different sort of use cases our two new models vo2 is more sort of like for real world physics and visual styles and cling high proper adherence and outstanding aesthetics which i think does actually match what you get from that model so it's not necessarily that one is better than the other but you also need to consider the resolution and frame rate cling 1.6 works at 1080p and creates videos at 30 frames per second. So that's a nice smooth, that's the same as say American television. Uh, VDU is just shy of 1080p at 32 frames a second. The extra two frames are not 100% sure why, but still that's, that's pretty decent, especially if it's producing the videos quickly. Now the remaining models are all at 720p with most of them at 24 frames a second. One being at 16 frames a second, that is sort of more like an old 80s, 90s cartoon animation frame rate, whereas 24 is kind of like film and movies, what you'd see at the cinema. I also find it interesting that Kling 2.0 is not at 1080p, and I believe that's probably because they don't have a pro quality mode, at least not yet. It'll probably be coming in the future, but I imagine that would bring it up to 1080p, 30 frames per second. But for now, you do get the enhanced animation and movement in your videos. But also, if you zoom in on the faces, the actual quality of the image beyond the resolution can be a little bit choppy on, say, Wan, and Kling seems to be the smoothest with the other two somewhere in between. But comparing Kling 1.6 to 2.0, and you'll notice Kling 1.6 looks a bit better, but this is because of pro quality. We've got a 1080p video versus a 720p video, and you can see the difference in resolution, but the quality, I think, on both is pretty good if you take that into consideration add vo2 into the mix it looks a lot like vo2 is actually a bit sharper despite being the same resolution as cling 2.0 so that goes to show you where the value is in that model despite the fact it has a lot less movement now not every video costs the same amount you'll find that for the top five models here 
You'll pay 100 points for a 5 second video or 200 points for a 10 second video, with the exception of Kling 1.6, going to Pro Mode doubles that. But head down to the two newer models and you'll notice that they cost a lot more. So these are actually a bit more advanced and take up a lot more time and more processing power. So therefore, you're going to pay a bit more with your credits. But coming back, what if I want to add an end frame? And I may even try auto sound at the same time. Now what I did is I took the original image I generated with OpenArt AI into the editor and I expanded and then further cropped so that the camera moved over to one side so that we can actually produce something with a little bit more control that's based off our original frame. So I'm gonna come here to end frame. I drag in my end frame. So you see now my start frame, he's looking away from the temple and the end frame's looking towards the temple and we've moved the camera over a little bit. I turn on auto sound and I can describe what kind of sound I want to put in here, such as I can say fire, birds screeching and heavy breathing. I click create. Now our video is finished and I just want to mention that before I show you this video, you can just simply hover over it and click the little download button to download your video. I think that the movement is very natural. The sound is pretty good up until maybe the last sort of second or so. So I'm going to run a test by removing the prompt I added to auto sound. And that was a lot more cinematic than what I put in there. So I think leaving it an auto sound without a prompt seems to work pretty well. But what about we move on to text to video? Now again, under our models, you'll see we have the same as before, except only one Halo standard and the two new models. So if I type in a prompt, I have a woman walking down the busy streets of New York during a storm, heavy rain, camera zooms in and her face as she walks, cinematic shot. I'm gonna try this with a few of the different models here. All I need to do is choose my model and then come down to create. And VO2 produced something that looks almost like it's out of a sci-fi film with that kind of color grading. Kling 2 with various levels of creativity starting from low does a pretty convincing job just producing a pretty standard sort of shot but it looks pretty realistic apart from a way some, the way some of the light kind of interacts with the scene. The high creativity is the most convincing one I think of all of them. Halo produced this which is pretty good but that woman reminds me of an actor. If you could name her just Pop it in the comments below for me. Otherwise, one has this weird bit of water going over the top, but is otherwise a pretty good, nice, colorful image. Vidu, a little bit funny, but still usable. And Kling, I still think this is the best, even though she's a bit out of focus at the start. When it gets close to her, the quality is awesome. So I tried to create another one with Kling using the auto sound just to see how it would turn out. Now, it doesn't sound perfect, but I mean, it sounds pretty good for AI sound. And one thing I'm aware of is that my prompt may not be great. So I'm going to turn on Auto Enhance, which uses AI to improve my prompt and see what difference that makes. VO2 has a similar subject, but a much more cinematic look to the overall image. Kling 2, very blue, kind of middle of the day, almost looks like it is out of a movie. And the same with Kling 1.6. The hat I thought was a bit out of place, but overall with these enhanced prompts, I think the results are only mildly better with what I put in there in the first place, but still worth using. Now I'm gonna keep auto enhance turned on, but I wanna play with auto speech. I want it to be lip sync, so I tick that, and then I can choose a voice. Your story deserves to be felt. Open art delivers. Ready to create something fresh? Start generating with open art. So you can preview and pick the one you like. No rush, just imagine and let. I'm gonna run with that one for now. Tranquil, I'm gonna type in a prompt to describe what I want her to say. I've got a woman in the rain says, I should have brought an umbrella. I'm going to create that. A woman in the rain says, I should have brought an umbrella. So that's not what we're after. So obviously I have added a little too much in here. So what I need to do is just simply get rid of this text and just put the speech in there that I wanna see. I should have brought an umbrella. Now the lip sync itself is pretty good, but it does move around a little bit on the face. So I guess the technology still has a little bit of improvement to go, but maybe experiment with more static shots to get a better result. But now we're gonna move over to Element. And the way this works, you'll notice it only works with Kling 1.6, is we can drag in different items into this spot here to use in our video. So I have these four images here, which I all actually generated within OpenArt AI. And I'm gonna try starting off with just the man and the cat. We simply drag in one image at a time. You'll notice the interface changes, drag in the second image or more. So I have the man and I have the cat, and then I type in a prompt. I have a man walks down the street alongside a small cat. I'm gonna put it onto Pro, 
and hit create. Now I thought the cat would walk alongside him, but I think this is still a pretty good result. I could probably improve my prompt if I wanted to really nail it down with a cat walking beside him, but pretty cool overall. So I decided to add the woman to this particular shot and then I changed the prompt slightly below. And at first I thought I had left the cat out, but then it pans down to reveal it at the bottom. So finally I add the sports car, but I don't even mention it in the prompt because I want it to rely on the element. And you can see it places it in the scene, the woman steps over the cat and there's another cat sitting next to the sports car. So overall, it does a pretty good job of referencing those objects. But one subtle detail I really love is the reflection on the car as the couple walk past. And most of the videos I generate on here work perfectly, but there's always a few little outtakes that you may need to regenerate. For some reason, this video went crazy with multiple shots and multiple cars. So I resubmitted it to get a better one. And this one combined the man and the woman into one character. And if you watch it again, you'll notice he's wearing the black cloak over one shoulder. So it's like a mixture of both. But what it comes down to is you want to make sure you spend time getting very descriptive and accurate with your prompt. I also think that image to video tends to be the best option. You can spend time perfecting an image as a great starting point and save on credits. However, Elements is still very powerful, but I would suggest maybe considering the fact you're probably going to have to submit a couple of times to get exactly what you're after. But finally, let's move on to audio. Because what we can do is actually drag and drop videos in here for up to 30 seconds and then add sound, add speech, even keeping the original sound and even change the speed of the actual speech down here. So we've got a few options to play with. So starting off, I'm gonna take this video here, which I put in the introduction of this video. I'm gonna drag it in and she doesn't speak in this video. So I'm gonna go with auto sound and just turn that on. I'm not gonna worry about typing in a prompt and I'm going to hit create. Now the image and the video were made with open art and I think the sound works really well, although it stops a little abruptly with that explosion. But let's take it a little step further. With all the same settings, let's actually add in a prompt this time to see what we get. I have cinematic background music of dark sci-fi techno theme, subtle sounds of flickering lights with a big explosion at the end. Now it didn't quite get the music, but it still added a little bit in there and the explosion sounds even better. Now coming back, I've uploaded our video from VO from earlier before. I've turned off auto sound and I'm gonna work on auto speech. I have here, where is everyone? Which is what I want her to say. I'll turn the speech on, I'm going to turn on lip sync and I'm gonna keep the speed at one and I'm gonna change the voice to something different such as. Ready to create something fresh? Open art delivers. Softly spoken, we'll give that a go. I hit create. Where is everyone? Now that has worked out pretty naturally. Now, combining auto sound and auto speech don't really go well together. I find it tends to rely more on the speech and doesn't really create much sound. And if I turn off speech and add in the video of her speaking, keeping the original sound does replace the voice and it doesn't actually work quite that well. But what I recommend is just simply turning off the auto speech, turning on auto sound, Typing in your prompt, heavy rain, light footsteps, and just simply producing a second video and then combining them in a video editor. So if I hit create and we get this. Now add this. Where is everyone? And the final result is. Where is everyone? So it's still quite powerful in the sense that you can create those two different soundtracks but sometimes going back to the old tools is the best way to combine them. And then you can adjust volumes. And again, AI is great. I always say that AI is perfect for speeding up processes, creating chunks of media, but the final product getting in and having an image editor or a video editor is gonna be your best bet to create the full complete package that you're after. So when you combine those video, audio, and even image tools at OpenArt AI, you've got a very powerful suite of the very best video and AI art models to create some stunning and out there media for your next project. So I highly recommend going in and having a go, checking out OpenArt AI, there's a link in the description, and having a play with these tools for yourself. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it uh, useful and interesting. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.